Hey, what's up, it's Andrew. Just thought I'd make this quick video because what I've been finding out recently is that because nowadays we're exposed to just so much information, it's so difficult for us to distinguish what's actually going to benefit our life and what's not going to benefit our life. See, for every 10 pieces of information we get this absolute bullshit, we get one piece of information that's valuable that would actually change our life in the good way that would actually make our life so much better. But the problem is, it's almost impossible to distinguish between these bad information and this good information for two reasons. First of all, we're getting so much information that we have to root through it all to try and find the gems, or we just implement everything. But we can't implement everything that we're, that we're reading about or that we're watching because there's just so much going on. And the other reason is because the way that we tell how important something is is by the way it's delivered to us. If one, if a bad use of inf a, if a bad piece of information to you is delivered with enthusiasm, then you're gonna think that this is a good piece of information. But some of the good pieces of information are found in boring ass books, and you're not gonna realize how important they are because they're not gonna be they're not gonna make such an emotional impact on you. Whereas the bad pieces of information oftentimes will. So the one piece of key information that you need to understand and it's probably the most important thing when it comes to disciplining yourself is that make it slightly more difficult for yourself to do the thing that you're trying to avoid or make it slightly easier for yourself to do the thing that you're trying to do an example of this is that I had a bag of Haribo on my shelf and I knew I wasn't going to eat that I told myself I promised myself I wasn't going to eat that and that's not the problem but the fact that it was there, or literally right where this camera is, there used to be a bag of sweets. And every time I'd see it, the thought would just cross my mind, oh, I really want one. But then I'd say, no, I'm not going to have it. But what this does is it slowly depletes your willpower because your willpower is a finite resource. They did tests where they made, they made, people, do, they made people do different like, experiments. They did make, <laughs> there was a test where they made people do tests. So they had to answer these hard questions, these questions that they really had to think about. And then afterwards, what they did was they made them put their hand in cold water. And what they found that the people that had struggled with the test more, they could keep their hand in the cold water for less long because their willpower had been depleted as they struggled through the tests. So they had less willpower when it, when it came to putting their hand in the cold water. So by having the bag of sweets there at all times, I was slowly depleting my willpower so that it was more difficult to me to stick to the other habits that I was doing in life. And you need to recognize this. If you're trying to avoid eating food, then make sure you have no unhealthy food in your cupboard. Because there's a saying that it's easy to diet when you're not hungry. And it's so true. So by having this unhealthy food in your cupboard at all times, it's going to be easy for you to give in. So just bin that food or hide it from your sight at the very least. If you're trying to make it, if you're trying to get in the habit of going to the gym, reverse this around and make it slightly easier for you to go to the gym. Put your clothes out, lay them out the, the night before so that when you wake up, Instead of going into your cupboard, you put on your gym clothes. And when you're in your gym clothes, your mind's going to say, right, it's time to go to the gym. I may as well go to the gym now that I'm in my gym clothes. You need to be able, you need to constantly be thinking in your mind. Is this piece of information a gem or is this piece of information absolute shite? Like most of the stuff that you listen to, most of the stuff that you watch, absolute shite. So make the distinguish in your, make the distinguish. Uh, make the separation in your mind between the two and only focus on these things and implement them. That's not, oh, I'm not even going to get into actually taking action. That's going to get me way too fired up for today. But yeah, I hope this has helped you. Oh, day 14, no fap. Let's go. That was the challenge that I set myself. To those people that said I'm in on the first, on the first day that I made that no fap challenge, have you committed? And if you haven't, think, why did I fail? What am I going to do better next time? If you failed, then that's fine. Let that go. It's in the past. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Like, you can't do anything about that. But commit and try again. To be honest, I had an advantage over you throughout this challenge. I had the fact that if I failed, I'd have to tell you guys. There's no way I'm going to sit here and lie to you. If I fail, I'd tell you. And that made it easier for me because... 
I had the social the social aspect of it. If I failed, then I'd be embarrassed. Whereas if you're doing no fat by yourself and you relapse, then no one's gonna be no one's gonna shame you. What you could do is tell a friend. And I know this is weird, but you could tell a friend. Or you could commit something like this. If I fail in this NoFap challenge, I'm going to donate £20 to a charity that I hate or to like the opposite political party that you support. Donate a certain amount, just enough that will keep you motivated and write it down. Say, if I fail this challenge, I will donate this much money. A money... All right, think of a mon- amount of money that you'd really hate to lose. If you're, if you're really poor, like... Two pounds, five pounds, ten pounds, slightly better off a hundred pounds, slightly better off a thousand pounds, and now double it. Yeah, that's the sort of money that you should be putting on the line. And write it down, say, I promise that if I fail this challenge, I'll donate this money. And by doing that, you will stick to challenges. It'll become easy. That one distinction will make it easy for you to make the right habits in your life. And the thing with discipline is, you only have to be disciplined for 21 days. And then a habit's made. And then it's easy for you to do the right thing. So if you're struggling with procrastination or you're struggling with eating unhealthy or you're struggling with not going to the gym or you're struggling with smoking weed or you're struggling with smoking tobacco, then what you need to do is realise that you've only got to do it for 21 days. And if you can do that, then it becomes easy. But that's it for me, guys. If you enjoyed the video, if you got anything out of it at all, then like the video. Go down and like the video because what it does is it helps me out. It pushes me further up the YouTube algorithm so that more people see this video. I'd really appreciate it if you liked it. Also, if you want to test how self-disciplined you are, then I have a quiz which you can do at andrewkirby.net. And that will tell you exactly how self-disciplined you are, a number from 0 to 100. So you can track how disciplined you are over time and make it a challenge that every single week you're going to do the quiz or every month you're going to do the quiz and it's going to increase that number one by one by one. And eventually you'll have monk-like discipline. Nothing will fall to you. Also, by signing up to that quiz, you'll get on my email list. So you'll get the most valuable information that I'm giving goes out to my email subscribers. So if you want to get that high quality content, then subscribe. Go to my quiz at andrewkirby.net and do the quiz and you'll get on my email list. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.